are at the congregation at a Georgia megachurch, heard a sermon they will never forget, and they heard it just one recent Sunday. Pastor Jim Swilly, a twice married father of four, stood before them, and a grandfather, as a matter of fact, and announced that he is gay. There are two things in my life that are an absolute. Um, I did not ask for either one of them. Both of them were imposed upon me. I had no control over either of them. One was the call of God on my life. The other thing, and I wouldn't have known what to call it at the time, was my sexual orientation. Uh, I know a lot of straight people think that uh, orientation is a choice. I want to tell you that it certainly is not. All right, well, Pastor Swilly, Bishop Swilly, is the founder of the Church in the Now in Conyers, Georgia, and he joins me now live here. Okay, so thank you. Hey, Don. And everyone will tell you it's very brave of you, um, even those who don't necessarily support what you did. It takes a lot of guts to do that. So you're 52 years old, and as I say, you're a grandfather. Right? I am. Why do it now? Well, uh, my ex-wife and I have been married 21 years, and uh, she's my co-pastor. Uh, we... Um, I've had a successful life. Uh, I was married once before, had two children, had two children in this marriage. Uh, but two years ago, she came to me and said um, something in response to, she knew about me before we got married. I was very honest with her. And uh, we got married anyway. And uh, about two years ago, she came to me and she said, you know, the um, motto of our church is real people experiencing the real God in the real world. And you have this message for everyone else that God loves them as they are. But uh, you don't give yourself that same grace. So your, your marriage, you said, wasn't a sham, you believe. And I think you say it in there, and, you, and, and as they say, it's a beard. She wasn't a cover. Not at all. She knew it's unconventional, not a typical marriage. But uh, it's real in the sense that we had real children. We lived in a real house. We built a real ministry. Uh, we were not intentionally lying. We were, I guess, trying to change a situation that is unchangeable. And you, we have pictures of you, your family, your wife, um, and your grandkids. And one of your sons is a, you know, plays in a band and, mm -hmm. and is uh, a semi-famous uh, musician is. as well. Yeah. If we have the pictures, we should, we should put them up. Um, how has your family and your kids, how have they reacted to this? Well, I would have never said anything publicly until uh, my, I knew that all four of my kids were okay. I talked to each of them individually. Uh, they knew the situation. They knew there had to be some reason why uh, their mother and I were divorcing because we've had a very amicable marriage. Uh, they've never heard us fight or be disagreeable at all. So uh, I had to tell them and I really had to make sure that I had the green light from them before I ever said anything about it publicly. Mm -hmm. Because if they had said, Dad, we do not want you to say this, I don't think I ever would have. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm going to talk much, much more. We're going to go in depth about whether, because there are some members of your congregation who believe that this means when you said that that you're going to be celibate mm -hmm. and that and you know gay marriage is obviously not legal mm -hmm. and the church says marriage is between a man and a woman mm -hmm. right and so what does that mean for you sexually does that mean you're never going to be with anyone else or are you going to well, take it? hang on let's okay. talk about that after the break do we more, have to talk about it at all more with bishop okay. jim swilly after the break All right, back now uh, with Bishop Jim Swilly, who came out of the closet to his congregation just a short time ago, mega church right here in Georgia. So I asked you before, um, what does this mean for you as far as having a partner sexually? What, what does it mean for you? Well, when I <clears throat> talked to the congregation that night, I said, I don't know what the future holds. And really, at this point, it's my business. Before I answer that question, I'd like to say that um, I usually don't like to answer that question, not because I have anything to hide, but... Straight people have a tendency to think that orientation is just about sex. And uh, that's where a lot of the confusion comes, even in the church. The reason I not dance around that issue, but the reason I'm careful how I answer it is because orientation is about much more than that. I, I know gay couples have been together 10, 15, 20, 35 years. I got a letter from somebody yesterday that has been with his partner for 42 years. So orientation is about love. It's about a worldview. It's about people who have lives, commitment. They buy houses, they raise children, they live lives. Yeah. So straight people have a tendency to think it's just about sex, and that's one reason why it's an issue in the church. And you think it's, it's sort of making it salacious by talking about it, and that's not what you want to do. Exactly. I know that you did this, you said, because of the bullying, and uh, especially the young man in New Jersey who, who killed himself, Tyler Clemente, because of... <clears throat> 
Well, after I knew that uh, Debbie was going to divorce me, I knew we had to say something about it, and I was really just sort of uh, neither denying nor confirming anything that people were speculating. But then people started asking me about certain things. They'd heard rumors that uh, I had left her for a man or there was some scandal, and there wasn't. Still, I just, uh, as a matter of fact, she encouraged me a long time ago to say something about it. And I said, look, these words will never come out of my mouth. But when the, something about there was like four, five, six suicides right in just a, a matter of days. And the young man that you mentioned, for some reason, his situation was kind of the tipping point with me. There's something that is very, I know that you, you have um, said this, and it's the hardest part for you was your wife thinking she wasn't attractive. Well, that's uh, something we had to make sure uh, that she understood, and, and she knows that. There's a, and you guys talked about it. What did you tell me about well, it? Well, I said, look, you're a, you're a beautiful woman. There's nothing wrong with you. You're a desirable woman. And, uh, you know, the, the part of me that's her husband uh, wants to still feel like, all right, you're my wife. You shouldn't be with anybody else. The part of me that is her friend uh, wants her to be happy in a way that um, she's known for some time. I could not provide that for her. We have a great mutual respect, a great synergy in working together. But there comes a point in your life where you say, how much time do we have left in our lives? Are we going to be authentic? Or I, I want to read some uh, viewer comments. Let's go to Twitter right now. Someone says, and if we can go through these really quickly here. Someone says, um, ask him uh, about Eddie Long. And the next one would be... <laughs> what, you don't want to talk about that. I don't really... Uh, what, I, what are you asking? I mean, I don't really... I, I know Bishop Long. I've known him for a long time. He's always been very uh, gracious to me. His staff has always been very nice to me. I think what they're meaning is asking about Eddie Long because it's because of proximity, not only in time, but in, in, in space. You, I mean, in place. You guys are basically we in, know in each Atlanta other, we're, area. And yeah. he, you know, there, he has been accused right. um, of using his influence over right. young men. I've known him for many years, but I wouldn't consider that we're close friends. I, I've never discussed this with him. I don't really have anything to say. But about you don't it. think the two have really anything to do with no, each other? No, not at all. Uh, and I'm not trying to make myself look good. I'm just saying my situation is completely different. Okay. I, uh, someone says, uh, ask him what makes a man want to be with a man, another man. Where is that in the Bible? Oh, man, you didn't prepare me for these. You know, uh, when it comes to people bringing up Bible stuff, I love the scriptures. I believe they're inspired. The Bible says a lot of things about a lot of things that people don't have answers for. Everything from Paul supporting slavery, which none of us uh, would support that now, uh, to many things. Uh, the scripture says uh, if you're given to gluttony, put a knife to your throat. Uh, you know, seem, we seem to be fine with fat Christians in the church, and uh, people don't really say a lot about that. And There's about no children. way children. It talks about children. If a child it's all, ki all kind of things. Uh, if you have a Deuteronomy says if you have a son that doesn't work for a living and is rebellious, to take him by the hand and lead him to the elders of the city and let them stone him with stones until he is dead. We don't support that now. If you have an unemployed son, you don't go kill him. But that's what the Bible says. It sounds is. to me, and I don't want to put words in mouth. Are you saying that? people in the church, many use the scriptures and the Bible in order to sort of enslave people or to control them? As a weapon, absolutely. And the thing is... The you Bible, think it's a distortion of scriptures? I do. The Bible's not a uh, book. It's a collection of books written by different authors for different reasons over a 1,500-year period. And it, there's a reason why Paul said it has to be rightly divided. It mm -hmm. means that you look at it, and when Jesus said, if your hand offends you, cut it off, you don't actually go and cut your hand off. Okay. We have to go, but did Jesus ever talk about homosexuality? Not a bit. Never said a thing about it. what do you it. think that means? What do you... I don't know. I, I would think, you know, he talked about a lot of things. Uh, there were... Uh, Many authors in the Bible that never mentioned it. Moses did, Paul did, Jude did. Uh, Jesus was silent on it. Yeah. Again, we got to come in real, real quickly here. Do you think there's a there's going to be an awakening in the church, and that there's going to be more to come? Well, my position is not about gaying up the church. It's about people being who they are and realizing that God loves everybody individually and that everybody has the right to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling and that your relationship with God is completely between you and God. I can't make a judgment call you, on it. Church has supported you? Are you worried about So those? far. Okay, you lost one church though. I've life. lost many churches okay. that were under my covering, but Church right. in the Now is fine. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. We're Dan. back in a moment here on CNN.